Within the field of social linguistics, researchers employ various methods to analyze language patterns and interpret how broader social and cultural factors are reflected in our linguistic practices. One especially powerful approach to uncovering these dynamics is critical discourse analysis, or CDA. CDA is more than just an approach to examining texts. It's a methodology that seeks to reveal the connections between language, power, ideology, and society. By systematically probing into how discourse, and by extension ideology, comes to shape social structures, we can better grasp how language is used as a tool for dominance, persuasion, or resistance. CDA often draws its theoretical underpinnings from scholars like Norman Faircloth, Toyn A. Van Dijk, and Ruth Vodak, who each approach discourse from slightly different perspectives, yet share a common interest to highlight the underlying power relationships encoded in language practices. At its core, CDA focuses on the idea that language does not exist in a vacuum. Rather, language is always shaped by context, and that context includes the history, politics, and power relations of the society in which the discourse is produced. By examining a specific piece of text, whether that text is a political speech, an advertisement, a newspaper article, a social media post, or any other form of communication, researchers can unearth hidden ideologies, stereotypes, and inequalities. It's important to understand the mindset that guides CDA. It posits that language can never be completely neutral, that words and phrases inevitably carry the weight of the speaker's beliefs and their place in society. By treating every utterance or written statement as an opportunity to inspect how power circulates, CDA practitioners can unveil relationships between the text and its broader social and historical contexts. This viewpoint positions CDA not just as a descriptive tool, but also as a critical one, urging analysts to challenge the status quo when language perpetuates unjust social relations. One of the main appeals of CDA is that it is flexible enough to be combined with other sociolinguistic approaches giving researchers the ability to employ both quantitative and qualitative data. However, CDA tends to be more qualitative in nature because it requires deep interpretive engagement with texts. The reason for this is that CDA often looks for patterns, metaphors, frames, or lexical choices that might not be immediately apparent through purely quantitative measures. While one can, for instance, count how many times certain words appear, the heart of CDA lies in uncovering why those words were chosen, how they fit into a broader network of meaning, and what social implications they carry. The process of conducting CDA can be broken down into several steps, though different researchers may adapt or emphasize different aspects according to their particular project. The following outline offers a straightforward step-by-step -step approach that can guide newcomers as they begin analyzing discourse from a critical perspective. First, select a text or discourse sample. This might seem obvious, but your choice of text is crucial. The text should be relevant to the social or political issue you want to explore. Whether it's a speech by a political leader on immigration, a newspaper editorial on healthcare policy, or a marketing campaign, that appears to target a specific demographic. When choosing your text, consider the potential power dynamics at play. Who is the speaker or producer of the text? Who is the audience? And how is the text positioning them? What broader social conversation does this text belong to? Second, familiarize yourself with the context surrounding the text. Context is everything in CDA. This involves historical context, like when and where was the text produced, social context, like what were the prominent issues or ideological debates at the time, and even institutional context, like does the speaker represent a government, a corporation, a grassroots movement, or an individual? The purpose here is to understand the environment in which the discourse was created. 
because that environment sheds lights on the motivations, constraints and assumptions of the discourse producers. Third, perform a close reading of the text. During this step, you look at the text in detail, paying special attention to word choice, syntax, rhetorical devices and any implicit assumptions. Examine how certain groups are named or labelled, how events are described and what values are presupposed. Reflect on whether any voices are excluded from the text or silenced. Ask yourself what perspective is being privileged by the narrative and whose interests are being served. In this stage, note recurring themes, metaphors or frames that might reveal how the text is trying to steer the reader or listener toward a particular viewpoint. Fourth, connect your findings to broader social structures. This is where you move from textual analysis to critique. If you notice certain words or phrases repeated throughout the text, think about how they tie in with known ideologies or social power structures. Are the word choices aligning a particular social group with certain negative or positive traits? Are they invoking certain stereotypes or discourses that circulate in society? Perhaps the text is drawing on a nationalistic narrative to justify specific policies. In making these links, you begin to show how this piece of discourse is not neutral, but is shaped by, and in turn shapes, social reality. Fifth, interpret the ideological implications of the text. In other words, examine how the text might influence readers or listeners to accept or internalize certain beliefs or values. If a text repeatedly describes a marginalized group in a certain way, how might that representation ripple through society, reinforcing stereotypes or fueling prejudice? This step involves evaluating the likely impact of the discourse on public opinion, policy debates or social behaviour. As part of this process, you might also look for direct or indirect ways the text tries to persuade the audience to adopt a particular viewpoint. Finally, draw conclusions that synthesise your analysis. Sum up the power dynamics you've uncovered, the ideologies present in the discourse and the larger social implications. Your conclusions should answer questions like, how does this text maintain or challenge existing power relations? Who benefits from the discourse and who might be harmed? In what ways does it reflect, reproduce or contest dominant ideologies? In your final write-up or discussion, you can also suggest how future research might dig deeper or explore related texts, or how different approaches might yield complementary insights. By following this sequence of steps, choosing a discourse, contextualizing it, performing a close reading, connecting findings to social structures, interpreting ideological implications, and finally concluding with the broader impact, CDA brings to light how language constructs and is constructed by social realities. The value of CDA in social linguistics is precisely this. It refuses to take language for granted and instead challenges us to probe the deep interconnections between word, meanings and power. In a globalized world where media content travels quickly and political rhetoric can influence international relationships as easily as local ones, being literate in methods like CDA is becoming increasingly important for students researchers and citizens alike. Moreover, because language is constantly evolving, new forms of discourse are continually emerging, especially in digital spaces like social media. These mediums offer unique opportunities to observe how language power and ideology shift in real time. For instance, analyzing X threads during political protests might reveal how certain hashtags unify participants around shared grievances, while others are used strategically to discredit or ridicule those same protesters. In these new domains, CDA remains relevant by adapting its methods and focusing on the ways that digital communication intersects with power. <laughs>